Hello and welcome to another episode of our Tottenham save. I am Duper Daddy and in today's episode we will be going through our tactics. We have three tactics that we will be going through in our season two so you don't want to miss it. Right we're going to go through my starting formation just so that you know I don't do play instructions. I might tweak play instructions in game but starting I just don't want them to get upset or anything like that in terms of that I might give them something that they don't want to be doing, like play more narrow or whereas they like playing more wide or something like that. So we play a sweeper keeper support. And then we play a back four with fullbacks as support and central defenders as defend. Now with Tottenham, I did play at the beginning. I think I had one on play ball playing defender. Now I like ball playing defender, but I, I just found that they were doing stupid stuff. Maybe I might revisit. Maybe Min Jay. Is it Min Jay? Min Jay or Jay Min? He could play as ball playing defender. Who knows? The aim of this formation is literally pressure, pressure, get the ball and score. Then we play a defense midfielder defense. Now with Bentenko and Hoiberg, I did try them on anchor. I did try them on ball, win ball winning midfielder. But I found actually for both of them, defense midfielder works really well. Then in our center two, we have Box to box midfielder, I tend to play Basoma there, and then we have our Mez. Now, I did have Mez as attacking. I'm not too sure. I can't remember why I stopped having him as attacking and put him as a support. Maybe I wanted more compact in there as we pressure. I can't remember. And then on for left and right, again, you could do inside forwards or inside wingers, I guess. I don't actually know too much of the difference of those two roles. I guess inverted wingers stay more wide and cut more wider in, I guess, and play like that. Whereas the inside forwards are more, they start from the outside and work their way in to make a front three. Did I just explain it right? I don't know. And then up top, we've got a pressure forward. Is that a pressure forward? A pressing forward. Excuse me. And a lot of times if I find, especially against bigger opponents or teams who like to keep the ball, I actually change that to a DLF attacking so that, especially with Kane, you don't want him to pressure. You want the inverted wingers to pressure while he drops back and then tries to pressure. Or when we're in play and we're building up, he drops back, gets the ball, and then we use our attacking. In possession, attacking width fairly wide. Approach play, passing space. I love passing space. Shame it doesn't work non-league. Oh, non-league. I tell you what, I'm probably in my unknown to icon. I'm probably going to get sacked in my first season. If you haven't seen my unknown to icon series so far, do check it out. So attacking with fairly wide. Oh yeah, passing space, play out of defense, slightly shorter passing, higher tempo right up top there. And in game, a lot of times I could either go, depends if we want for crosses, uh, try and bring up our fullbacks. Or if we can play into the centre, work ball into box. Again, uh, it's a good base formation because you, you can do a lot of things you can change up. For usual counter press counter, distribute centre backs and take short kicks. And then in out of position, higher defence line, high press. Trigger press much more often. If we're winning the game 1-2-0, I tend to drop for much more often and uh, for higher tempo down. Whereas if we're losing the game 1-0, I would either go straight to my attacking formation or I would put, get stuck in and probably push much higher up there. And then the uh, defence line step up more. To be fair, that's probably that anyway. But they step up more when needed. Where they, if they play that baseline and then they step up more. Whereas if we had it higher up, then they'd be really stepping up, piling on that pressure. And then we go into our, what's this? Cautious version two. So exact same formation. Apart from fullbacks are playing defensive, they are all the same. And I've got a deer left, so he drops back more instead of pressuring more. On cautious mentality, so I tend to put this on either we need to see our game last 70 minutes, uh, last 70 minutes, last 20 minutes, or we're winning 2 now and we just need to give a rest. Now, I have done that in my version one, and for teams just piled on me and got back into a game, and then I'd go to attacking, and it was just too late. This is a learning I've taken from version two. Sit back, keep our shape, pass the ball about and waste time and look for those set plays. And that's where you're going to see now. So attacking with standard, we're still doing for passing into space, passing directness standard. So we are going short, but we're also going long. Tempo slightly higher, time wasting frequently and play for set pieces. 
we're going to regroup and counter in our transition and then out of position we have a defensive shape of mid block and lower defensive line still giving a bit of press we don't want to let go too much right but also we're trying to push them out wide because if you can push them out wide and not into your goal they pretty much have to cross okay so we're on for last tactic now my attacking tactic i tend to use it Depends who I'm playing. If I'm playing someone who I know I should be beating and they score against me straight away, I will change to it straight away. If we get one, get two, and then go back to my starting formation. Or I might hold out and see how we're playing. If we're still dominating in our starting formation, why not see how it pans out? If they score another one, obviously change it. Or if you're on top of the game and it's nil-nil or you're losing by that one goal, and then I would probably strongly advise change it, probably last 20 25 minutes to really just go for it and fingers crossed that you get that goal right let's quickly run through it we've got sweeper keeper attack then our wing backs attack not full backs wing backs we really want to push them up they're going to be friendly wingers so we normally play inverted wingers and then in our defense because we're really pushing up we want that cover just in case they play a dink ball over us we want that cover so we've got a center defense cover Either side will do. And then we've got centre defence stopper who's just pushing forward a little bit because we don't have that defensive midfielder. Yes, we do have a ball winning midfielder on defence in our midfield, but he's, again, pushing up a little bit more. He's trying to win that ball even further up. So then we, I just felt that if we really are attacking, let's get a stopper, let's get a ball winning midfielder. It's like having two defence midfielders and then one just covering bit of a sweep defender and then we've got a sweeper keeper but if they get past us on our wing backs we're screwed in a way but then they still will get a ball in into our box and then obviously get a goal as i said we've got a ball in the midfielder defense center mid support now you could have a play with that position to be fair you could put box to box but then again box to box you don't want them fall back you just want them to get forward or just stay there i think i chose that position just so that he's there just in case could probably put them as a DLP support and then change advanced playmaker to attacking midfielder. And then our three attacking players, we normally play wingers. To be fair, they quite naturally fall into that their left position anyway. From my experience, they play all okay there or get a goal, but they don't quite get from being out wide. Instead of them starting out wide, they're starting right next to our main striker, who obviously is going to be our advanced forward mentality attacking and then into our possession we play attacking width fairly wide approach play passing space and then play out of defense slight um da -da -da -da. approach play play out of defense and then passing the runner slightly more direct and then higher tempo no time wasting just want to get it there get a goal that's what it's all about it's just getting a goal don't think about defending it transition play to get it as quick as possible upfield and get a goal play for set pieces so if we can't quite transition play for a set piece run at defense be more expressive into in transition so we've got counter press counter distribute quickly distribute center backs take short kicks out of possession defensive shape high press line of engagement defensive line much higher and that's even going to be more because we've got step up more Trigger press, much more often. Prevent short goalkeeper distribution. Tackling, get stuck in. Defensive line, step up more. As I said already, pressing trap, trap inside. So don't forget, if our wing backs are pelting forward, where do we want to trap them? We want to trap them. Don't go out wide. They're going to screw us out wide. So let's get them trapped inside. But if they do get out wide, then we want to get those crosses stopped as soon as possible. And that is my three tactics I've been playing from the start on my Tottenham save. We got third last season, semi-final, got knocked out by Liverpool, I'm going to say. But then we beat Real Madrid in the quarters, something like that. And then last game, one of the last games of our season, we actually beat Liverpool, who won Premiership by a mile. We beat them at Anfield 3-1. Thank you for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, give that a like. If you want to see what's coming up next and how these tactics performed in our results in the next episode, then hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss it.